Article number 13, move that the town adopt Mass General Law Chapter 48, Section 42A for the administration of a fire department. Is there a motion? Is there a second? The Finance Committee recommends this three to zero and the Select Board recommends this two, four, and two abstentions. Selectman Chunglo. The fire department will get a new fire chief on the retirement of Fire Chief Kitsa, who has admirably, admirably headed up the fire department for many years. As the town searches for a replacement, the town needs to answer the question of how will our new fire chief fit within Massachusetts law. Currently, the Hadley Fire Department is governed by town meeting vote taken in 1930 that spells out some, but not all, of the powers and duties of a modern fire chief. This article adopts the section of Massachusetts law that gives the town the ability to direct the growth, the growth of the fire department over the next several years. Further discussion? Uh, Deputy Chief, Hadley Fire Department, George Moriarty. Uh, this article is not what the members of the department want in any way. Uh, there's two, two types of articles. Uh, the 48, excuse me, the uh, 42A, which gives the select board full power on appointing all members of the fire department. They could, without any uh, anything, uh, appoint officers. Uh, we feel that uh, our chief, whoever the chief happens to be, should be appointing all the officers. The select board has the right to appoint the fire chief and fire the fire chief. But the fire chief has the ability to put in leadership positions uh, the people he wants and that he's trained with and he trusts. Uh, over the years, the, the select boards, not this board by no means, but in the past, uh, select boards have put officers uh, in, in the department that weren't qualified. Um, and once they're in, it, it was tough to move them out. So we, we as a department have spoken to a Selectman Chungle this, this winter and, and we, we voiced our, our disproval of, of this article and I guess we're a little surprised it showed up at this meeting. Um, so at, at 7 o'clock or 6.30 I got calls so that's why we're here. And I, we're prepared to make an amendment to the article and uh, I think I'll let the firefighter here make the amendment. Uh, Jeff Christick, 124 East Street. I'm also uh, been on the fire department for seven years. And uh, yes, I have an amendment to this article. Uh, Lee Smith. Amendment proposed is section 42. Towns accepting the provisions of this section in sections 43 and 44, or which have ex corresponding provisions of earlier laws, may establish a fire department to be under the control of the officer to be known as the chief of the fire department. The amendment is that the chief specifically would be uh, the appointing officer for the department? Is that the one change in the? Uh, well, there, there's several changes in the, in the uh, article there. Mr. Is, Moderator, uh, okay. Joel Bart, Town Council. I just want to be clear and, and also just make it clear to everyone else what's going on here. So the article as it appears in the warrant and the motion moved by the uh, Board of Selectmen is to accept chapter 48, section 42A, and as you described earlier, uh, under that section, the um, 
fire department essentially is under the control of the board of selectmen who can appoint the fire chief and the other officers. Uh, if I understand the amendment, the amendment is to amend the motion and where the motion currently refers to chapter 48, section 42A, your motion would have it be chapter 48, section 42. Correct. And just so everybody knows, there are references, the two statutes are referred to as a 42A is referred to as the weak chief statute, and what the firefighters are proposing is section 42, which is a so-called strong chief statute. So in fact, the amendment is simply looking to change where the reference now is to 42A to change it to 42. So it changes it from the motion, which was the weak chief statute, to the amendment, which is the, the strong chief statute. Did I get that right? Correct. Right. Okay. Chapter 42 read in its entirety? Yes. Whatever. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. I have a larger copy here that I'm able to read. Section 42. Towns accepting the provision of this section in sections 43 and 44 or which have accepted corresponding provisions of earlier laws may establish a fire department to be under the control of an officer known as the chief of the fire department. The chief shall be appointed by the selectmen and shall receive such salary as a selectman may from time to time determine, not exceeding the aggregate amount of the annual appropriation thereof. He may be removed for cause by the selectman at any time after a hearing. He shall have the charge of extinguishing fires in the town and protecting the life and property in the case of fire. He shall purchase subject to the approval of the selectman and keep on repair all property and apparatus used for and by the department. He shall have and exercise all the powers and discharge all the duties conferred or imposed by statute upon engineers of the towns except as herein provided. And shall appoint a deputy chief and such officers as firemen as he may think necessary. And may remove at same any time for cause after a hearing. He shall have the full and absolute authority of the administration of the department. He shall make all the rules and regulations of its operation. Shall report to the selectmen from time to time as they may require and shall annually report to the town the conditions of the department with his recommendations thereon. He shall fix and compensate all permanent and call members for the department subject to the approval of the selectmen. And in the expenditure of money, the chief shall be subject to such further limitations as the town may from time to time prescribe. The appointment of the chief of the fire department and any town or district having a population of 5,000 or less may be for a period of less than three years. Is that the motion as you know it? Yes. Yes. That is the motion. Is there a second? Second. And motion and seconded. Further discussion? Hi. I'm Ed Kevitz. I'm the assistant fire chief. And unbeknownst to me, this happens to be on the town meeting warrant tonight. The reason I am for the strong chief is because the chief has observed the people under his direction in action. I think he's better qualified to determine who amongst his personnel is ready for a leadership position. And I think when you have politics involved, vis-a-vis -vis the select board, we have a chance of uh, getting a political appointment. And I think these guys risk their lives for this and they need somebody who has training and the capability to lead them. And who better then the fire chief to make that decision. He is answerable to the board of selectmen and he's answerable to everybody in this room because by their vote, 
giving the selectman the authority to, to give him this power. It's not that you, you can't really make this guy powerless if he has to discipline somebody. Okay. And he rubs him the wrong way. You know, he rubs the selectman the wrong way because you discipline his power. I'm not saying it's happened, but we have the opportunity is there. And I and I really I was never asked my opinion on it. I don't think any of the command staff was about how this shows up. Thank you. Jim Exmoski, 12 North Water Drive. For the rest of the people in this room, we know what 42 says. What does 42A say except for bits and pieces that we're picking up because if we're gonna vote on this, I'd like to at least make an informed vote. Thank you. Guys, just give me one second. Section 42A, in towns which accept this section or have accepted corresponding provisions of earlier laws, there shall be a fire department established under the direction of the selectmen who shall appoint the fire chief and the fire department and other such officers and firemen as they deem necessary and fix their compensation in an amount not an aggregate exceeding the annual appropriation therefore. The selectmen may make suitable regulations governing the fire department and the officers of the firemen therein and the towns which do not, which are not subject to chapter 31 may remove the chief and other officers and firemen at its pleasure. The chief of the fire department shall be determined in control of all town property used by the fire department and the officers and firemen who shall obey his orders. Uh, Jeff Christick again, 124 East Street. I just want to highlight one part of 42A. Uh, it says a select board can remove officers and firemen at pleasure, <clears throat> where the main difference between 40 and 42 is, is after a hearing. So it puts a process on trying to hire and fire somebody versus where, I don't know exactly how it would work, but I guess if the select board decided they didn't want a captain or a, a chief or a deputy chief, they could just do a vote and vote them out at pleasure. And uh, yeah, so that's that's the main difference between, one of the differences between the two articles. I abstain from this because I did sit in on your meeting and I wanted to, you know, get your views on this, but you knew it was coming about. You didn't, you weren't blindsided to the fact that this was, you know, coming before town meeting. At some point it was going to be last fall, but we pushed it off till spring. Um, yeah. The rationale of the rest of the select board was that the, the our police chief, oh, he was there, oh, there he is. Our police chief um, is hired by us. And all of his officers, all of his police officers, he goes through the screening, he goes through the process of saying who he wants as his sergeants, his lieutenants, um, and his police officers. He, in turn, brings them before us with his recommendations that these are the people that he wants hired. And I believe that was the same um, thing that we wanted to follow suit with the fire chief also. Um, yes, we do hire and fire the fire chief, but it would also be in conjunction with working with him um, and having his recommendations, because I, I do agree with you that um, he should know and you people should know who you have in the department and who you have working for you and who deserves to be your leaders or not your leaders. Um, that certainly has, an, has proven over the past years of who you want in there. So that, I think that was the rationale for it. I, it's not like we're trying to weaken the chief. Um, I think in a sense that it'll make it stronger that we work together as a board. That was what I saw. But again, you know, I abstained because we had really, we had already talked about it at one point and I knew your feelings. But again, that was the side of what the select board had, had talked about. Steve Barso, 20 Barso Lane. Uh, I just wanted to speak on the strong chief as far as a business standpoint. If you have a strong leader that is allowed to hire and fire, he hires people that he sees fit, that he's worked with over the years, and I see that you would have that trust in that person as you hired him as a fire chief. Um, he as the leader with that, I think it builds a stronger fire department as a whole.
Mr. Moderator, just as a point of information, we have an employee personnel policy which states that any employee who has gone beyond the six-month probationary period may not be terminated without cause and after a hearing. That would apply to all employees. George Moyarty, Deputy Chief, uh, 22 Tremor Road. I'd like to bring up one thing that was was uh, between the two articles. Uh, at, at this point, uh, all your policies with the select board, um, you know, uh, if 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 uh, the A passed, uh, is probably you know with this board. But uh, in years past, boards have changed. Uh, politics have changed in this town, and as the fire department, we always try to stay out of it. And and we we would rather see a strong chief, and then we we would stay out of the politics games if if uh, you know two years from now it's a different board. Uh, it doesn't mean that there's a vendetta against one of the officers or a firefighter. And at this point, yes, we have a procedure uh, that they have to have some kind of hearing. Uh, but this is stated in, in Mass General Law, not just in, in things that can be changed within the town. Uh, we've, we've had what we've worked under since the 30s. Uh, this is probably the first time it's ever changed. Uh, whatever changes tonight will probably be here for another 50 years. So uh, as members of the fire department, I've been in the department for 30 plus years. Uh, and a strong chief is very important for the officers, the morale, uh, how our department runs, and, and just the quality people that have to be in leadership positions. I also have to abstain. But I agree completely with Mrs. Junko's point. Your, your chief would have to bring up to us who he suggests to be in these leadership positions. You know, it's up to his recommendation, and we act on that. It's not that we're going to dictate who's going to be on. He's going to have to come up. He's going to have to decide who he wants in these positions. That's all. Uh, Molly or she. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Molly Keegan, 16 Hadley Place. Uh, just a question, well, a, a point and a question um, for the select board. Uh, within the school department, the superintendent has sole hiring and firing authority over the personnel under the, you know, the assumption that the superintendent as the educational leader is in the best position to uh, manage the staff and do the hiring and all of that. So no, not every position does come to the school committee. Um, and I'm just curious, since you're, you're recommending um, this particular article, um, you must have discussed the disadvantages of following the recommendation or the, um, the wishes, I guess, of the fire department staff themselves. So could you explain to the rest of us who aren't involved in the fire department what the disadvantage of having a strong chief would be, in your opinion? Brian West, select board member. Um, I think as far as the amended article, and I believe that's 42, the thing that concerns the select board and even I believe the finance committee um, is the fact that under 42, the fire chief can hire, set salaries, um, appointments and everything else on his own without our approval, similar to the superintendent in some ways with the school committee. Um, personally, members of the select board, and, th and this is not really a leadership issue at all for us. Um, uh, we have two new members and we've had people throwing stones at us for a year and a half saying, we don't know anything about water, we don't know anything about sewer departments, we most certainly don't know anything about a police department. That's why we have a police chief, that's why we have a DPW director, and on and on and on. What we're concerned about is a situation where we were this year where we have a budget shortfall of $850 thousand dollars now if you say well you hired the chief you can fire him 
Trust me, when you hire a full-time chief and he has a contract, it is not easy to fire somebody. And just because you don't like a decision he made, that is not considered just cause to fire somebody. So our concern purely is from a financial standpoint of the town where we would like to have the control to say, okay, you're gonna have X amount of officers, X amount of people in leadership positions, and this is how they're gonna be paid. Now obviously we would work hand in hand with he or she, but we don't feel comfortable relinquishing that duty to the chief. As far as the makeup of the department, who the actual candidates are, wholeheartedly we would support the chief and his recommendations, but we're concerned about the financial aspect of it. Thank you. Can I just ask a clarification in his response or no? Go ahead. No, I, I just wanted to be clear, Brian. So what you're saying then is even though once the budget is approved and that's the only money that the fire department has, that you're concerned that the chief might over expend and then the town would be having to take money out of the... I'm, I'm just confused about why that's different from any other department right now. I'll read, I'll read from, I'll read from article 42, which is the amended article. He, but we'll insert he slash C, see now it's 2013, shall have full and absolute authority in the administration of the department, shall make all rules and regulations for its operation, shall report to the selectmen from time to time as they may require, and shall annually report to the town to the town on the condition of the department with his recommendations thereon. And this is the one we're concerned about. He shall fix the compensation of permanent and call members of the fire department subject to the approval of selectmen. There you go. There you go. There you go. I'm going to need four counters, too, if I can get some volunteers. Not firemen, please. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dwyer. Hey, yeah, Bill Dwyer, 388 River Drive. Uh, Mr. Potter, I wonder if we could ask town council for an opinion on whether the amendment is within the scope of the article. Seeing that it has triggered a fairly broad-ranging policy question, it strikes me that maybe the uh, best solution might be to vote on the original article, yay or nay, and assuming it does fail, as it may well, then the um, um, makers of the amendment could come back at the next town meeting with an article no. uh, of their own. No. Articles are amended all the time. The scope of the article. It can't be amended outside the scope of the article. Um, Mr. Moderator, I have bad news for you. It's actually a moderator's call, not town council's call. Um, just to explain uh, Mr. Dwyer's question, the issue of scope of the article is, is this, that an article comes before town meeting and amendments can be made, but the amendment can't be so significant that it considerably changes the character of what was originally proposed. So in this instance, what was originally proposed was a weak chief that the town accept the statute that, um, that formally establishes that the chief's position is a weak chief position. The amendment obviously flips at 180 degrees. The point that Mr. Dwyer raised is, so is that within the scope of this article. In other words, was town meeting on notice that, or I shouldn't say town meeting, but the voters of the town of Hadley, were they on notice, including people who didn't come tonight, were they aware the town meeting, instead of voting a weak chief statute, might vote, vote in a strong chief statute? And I'd be happy to consult with the moderator, but it's actually the moderator who determines whether or not something is within the scope. It's a fair question, but it's a, a discretionary call for the moderator rather than a black and white question of law.
understood that we were coming here tonight to talk about a fire chief and that I think people should understand that when you have a town meeting warrant the warrant is available on the website for many weeks before town meeting occurs in addition to that assuming that we vote one way or the other uh, this evening I think it can be I know that down the road if it's something that the town is not happy with then they are able to change it back I'm sorry Alan Eggleston, 231 Bay Road. I rise to support the amendment. I think it makes sense for management. I think it makes sense for accountability. I think it prepares Hadley for the future. I think we should support it. Lowell Whitney at 11 Arrowhead Drive. Uh, just a clarification on what happens if both of them were to fail. What is the current law that's in place? Back in 1930, town meeting voted on uh, some conceptual language having to do with the duties of the fire chief. Uh, so we would revert back to what was in place in 1930. Uh, it's a, it was an article that uh, asked what, what is it? It's an article that uh, established the fire department uh, apparently for the first time as a municipal function. And it set out a uh, fire chief uh, who had um, the ability to run the department uh, and exercise some control. It's not, not terribly well spelled out. Linda Sanderson, Finance Committee. Um, this is a, a, a new position we were adding to the budget this year. Um, this was, we spent a lot of time discussing whether the town, whether our revenues, whether our budget could accommodate a position with, and basically um, through discussions with the, the select board and, and ourselves, we decided that um, we needed to support um, the police, uh, the fire chief position, we added $80,000 to the budget this year, and um, and this is this is in, important that you know we recognize the importance to fund the department properly and get the um, management in there that they need. Um, I know on my part, and I think what we discussed within the Finance Committee is the position that we're discussing putting in, or that the solution have proposed to put in, is analogous to what we have within the police department. That's something that, uh, again, this is a new position we're adding in. We're familiar with, we're comfortable with how it works within the police department. This is the kind of thing we're going to see how it works in the, in the fire department. It seems to me like it's a, an appropriate first measure to take when you're, when you're making this kind of a big change in the fire department. And the last thing I would say is um, if it's recommended in the future that more authority within the police department or the fire department is needed among the chiefs, if it seems to be the way the town should run is more like the way the school is run with a superintendent, that's something I would say that we would need to visit in both departments and make those kinds of decisions and I would say it's a lot easier at some point to say let's go for the let's move up let's make a give a get a fire chief let's give them more authority to say this isn't working let's take some of that authority away I would say uh, keep in mind that we are moving in the right direction we're going in the same direction as as, as all you're wanting to go we're getting this new position in we're funding it um, I personally think this is the way to go that we put it in in a, in a uh, and by the means that we're familiar with, which is the way the police department uh, runs, and let's let's fund it, let's get going with it, and let's revisit it another time and give the select board, finance committee, the town, fire department, give you a chance to work with it and see how it goes. 
Mr. Moderator, Robert Adair, 359 River Drive. I'm also on the fire department, been on for about three years now. <clears throat> One of the things I'd like to explain is this is not about whether or not we have a full-time fire chief, uh, part-time fire chief as we have now. Uh, it's not about how the money is spent within the budget. Obviously, the fire department has to operate within its budget and part of the, the job of the fire chief is to make sure that he understands how to run his budget so that he uh, allocates the correct amount of funds per his employees and so on and so forth. One of the reasons I believe, I hope I'm going to say this right for on behalf of all the guys on the fire department and the women as well, we have a couple of them, um, that what we are looking for in this strong chief's position is, is that we're looking for somebody who can promote and demote, hire and fire at his discretion based on what he sees as his needs in the fire department for personnel, uh, people who are more trained or less trained than others, who may be more active or less active. Another thing I wanted to bring up uh, that I think has some importance is, is that unlike many fire departments such as uh, are around us like Ad, uh, Amherst and Northampton who are full-time fire departments which is also the difference with the police department here in Hadley is that our fire department is a call volunteer fire department so what happens is is that we all have full-time jobs we have busy lives many of us are only available maybe a few months out of the year and as time goes along, the lives of these men and women who serve the fire department change. And because of that, their ability to serve the fire department can change as well. So sometimes over the course of time, somebody may have less time to dedicate to the fire department. And if they are somebody who may be in a leadership role, uh, it may be wiser for them to take a step backwards so that somebody who has more time to, and, tr and more new age training to offer the fire department can step up and be a part of, of the operations. And that way, we have people who are leading that are constantly involved in the fire department and generally have the highest quality of training. And that's really what we're looking for, is we're looking to make sure that we have the right amount of training, people who are active and educated in the fire service in charge, whether they be lieutenants, captains, chiefs, etc., cetera, um, and that we have a structure in the fire department. Um, and I think that's really what we're looking for in a strong chief, is somebody who will have the ability to run the day-to-day -day operations in that manner. I hope I've said all this right and I've made some sense. Thank you. We're, the difference between these two articles in layman's terms, you're, you're really splitting hairs. Um, it, Chief Huckowitz, wherever he is, oh, there he is. How you doing, Chief? Um, is If he considers himself a weak chief, uh, when he has a disciplinary problem or if he needs to make a personnel change, all he simply does is come to us and say, I need to go in this direction with a, an employee. Um, he, even though he is considered a quote unquote weak chief, and I, and I don't like the word weak and I don't like the word strong because it, it's a defeatist mentality when you have somebody in a management position if you label them either or. Um, he fully runs his department. He disciplines within his department. He does not come to us and say, what do you think? He says, I need to discipline an employee. He does it. Um, and as far as the article where they were talking about expending the money, obviously the fire chief would only be able to expend what money is budgeted within his budget. But, but if you revert back to the budget we just passed, there's a line item called benefits. And within this town, the health insurance is over a million dollars. The retirement is $750,000. There are decisions made within department budgets that don't affect their budget, it affects the benefits line item. And I believe if you ask the finance committee and the select board, that's what we're talking about when we're talking about financial control. 
obviously if the fire department has a budget they would only be able to expend it and like I said we're splitting hairs because anybody who is hired in that position it would not be in their best interest to sit down and argue with your bosses over something about an employee obviously I, I think every member of this board if we wanted to run the fire department and we had the qualifications for it, we'd apply for the job. We are receptive to our department heads, Mr. Gerard, Mr. Huckwitz. So we're really splitting hairs here. I think we can make it work either way, but just for your information, if you go with section 42, he has the authority to make those decisions. We cannot overturn them at the select board level. Obviously, he would only be able to expend his fire budget, but there's a benefits line item that the taxpayers have to pay. Mm -hmm. Let's really try to pay attention to the three minute rules, please. We're starting to run a little late. Yes, ma'am. Merrill and Judah, 3 French Street. Um, I'd just like to say on behalf of the fire department that morale, I think, is a strong factor here that needs to be considered. They're almost, they're, we're almost all volunteers. It's unlike the police department where it's mostly paid. And I think that is a factor that really needs to be considered. How they feel about it is really important. We want a strong fire department. So I would say give them what they want. You know, I just want to bring one thing up. Uh, 25 minutes ago when this article started, the select board and the finance committee was really concerned that the chief could just spend all his money on whatever he wanted until we had to point out that right in the Mass General Laws, the select board has to approve you know, the raises or, or, or the finance and the spending. Um, so I think that all got thrown out and now we're trying to, we're trying to take control over the fire department as a select board. Um, we feel that a, a chief, a, a well, well trained, uh, full time chief is going to be able to manage our department. Uh, you guys are going to be the ones hiring them. Hopefully, us as the fire department have some say uh, in some of the interviews. But in the end, you guys are the hiring and firing. Uh, and I think this article, there's, there's this, this town, uh, there's many towns that have strong chiefs. There's many towns that have weak chiefs as well. Um, We've, we feel that this, a strong chief and the way it's set up and it's spelled out in the general laws is what we need for our fire department in our town. Uh, and hopefully this article will pass. Thank you, George. Any further discussion? Mr. Moderator, call to question. The call has been called on the amendment, which would be section 42. The amendment is for a strong chief to be inserted. This is a simple majority. I'm going to go without counters to start with. If I need to count, we'll have to count, ladies and gentlemen. All those in favor of the amendment, please signify by blazing your card. All those opposed? Motion passes. We're now going to go back to the original article and insert section 42 where section 42A used to be. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'd like to call for a vote. All those in favor of article 13, please signify by raising your cards. All those opposed? Motion passes.